G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, pretty stock standard Sunday, not too much happening in crypto uh, at the moment, charts wise, but a couple of interesting stories that I found on the net that I thought I'd share with everyone. So we have a look at here and it says, Bitcoin adoption is taking a different path than initially expected. Well, I think this uh, story is basically just pointing out the obvious, so thanks very much. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this name, <laughs> I know it. Birajman Tamuli. Anyway, basically what he's going on to say is that uh, crypt, uh, Bitcoin, uh, it's not being used as a currency, it's being used as a store of wealth. I think we've all known that about cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin for some time now. It's too slow, not fast enough. Uh, it'll just be too hard to be used as a, uh, as a legit currency. And again, even with the whole 21 million, yes, it can be broken down into you know, millions of other pieces from that 21 million. But I just, yeah, I think it's store of value purpose is where it's at. But something I did find interesting is that people uh, with higher amounts of Bitcoin are increasing and the people with uh, smaller amounts of Bitcoin are actually quite small. So it says here, uh, balances of 0.01 BTC to 1 BTC is only 4.8%. Uh, so that's uh, uh, not a lot. Uh, smaller holdings of Bitcoin are quite small, but you can see 23.77% have between 10 and 100 Bitcoin. Good Lord, I hope I have 10 plus Bitcoin one day. That'd be nice. But even <laughs> more scary is 22.09% hold between 1,000 and 10,000 BTC. Good Lord. Well, I guess grayscale is going to be up there in that. Uh, and there's a couple of... Uh, other sort of hedge funds and things that are getting involved these days are uh, Bitcoin Swiss and we'll have a look at them uh, very shortly. They're also getting into it. So yeah, very interesting. I thought there'd be a lot more people out there with uh, smaller amounts of Bitcoin. But I think, you know, my gut feeling from reading those sort of stats is that people with uh, not a lot of money are getting into the smaller caps. They're not really worrying about uh, BTC too much. And they're getting into the ones that transfer faster and the fees don't kind of kill them and all the rest of it. So yeah, interesting. Bitcoin store of wealth. That graph there and those statistics tell me though that the people who can afford Bitcoin and can hold on to them, they're going to see some uh, really solid growth in the future because they're not going to move. People aren't really going to sell it. They're going to hold on to it and eventually they're probably going to be putting it into DeFi lending platforms and things like that and just earning interest from it. I don't think a lot of Bitcoin will ever legitimately be sold in the future. I think it will literally be that store of wealth. I'm not saying no one will ever, ever sell it because obviously people will, but I think people are just going to be hoarding it. And this says that, again, the fact that there's only 4.8% of people with less than a Bitcoin uh, out there says that there's not that many. But people uh, with a lot more Bitcoin, uh, that's obviously growing. That's that's the growth area. Now again, I'd love to just make this one here. If I can get to 10 Bitcoin one day, I'll be absolutely stoked. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. I'm a fair way off that at the moment. But we can all dream. So we go over here and there was another interesting article on the Daily Hoddle. So basically it's a prominent Bitcoin whale saying he doesn't think uh, Ethereum will ever hit its all-time highs again. And what he basically goes on to say in here is he thinks that the, uh, the fees for Ethereum at the moment are really just slowing it down. And he also kind of says the same about uh, Bitcoin Cash. He doesn't think that'll return to its all-time high because people are out trying to make a quick buck at the moment. And so they're going to shift their attention to you know newer altcoins and things like that. And look, that's absolutely true. But that's only in the short term. In the long term, the good coins, they're going to last. Everyone will be taking those profits out of these quick uh, buck turners and then putting it back into things like Ethereum and Bitcoin. And look, I don't know. I, I don't have any Bitcoin cash and I don't think Bitcoin cash is uh, going to last. But you never know. Maybe they do and people will be putting money back into Bitcoin cash. We'll just have to wait and see. But I think, uh, yeah, I think this Bitcoin whale... Yeah, the fact that they call him a Bitcoin whale kind of says everything. Bitcoin whales, that doesn't necessarily mean he's a Bitcoin maximalist, but it definitely says uh, he's, you know, he has a high opinion of Bitcoin. And look, so do I. But I, I think Ethereum is going to be here to stay, and I think it's going to be 
you know, it's where everyone's going, the whole proof of stake thing, moving away from proof of work and all the rest of it. And once we get those layer two uh, solutions going, you know, with a little bit of luck, uh, the fees will go way down on Ethereum. And particularly, you know, if Ethereum can get up to those thousands of transactions a second, then the fees should be able to come right down. And I think Ethereum will do just fine. As for Bitcoin Cash, who knows? You know, let me know down below if you're a Bitcoin Cash uh, believer and you're invested in it. And let me know your opinion on if you think it's going to be around. It, it was doing quite well in the 2017 kind of bull run. But geez, it's taken a big hit. It's yeah, really pulled back and it hasn't done a whole lot since. You know, Bitcoin SV's kind of taking some of uh, Bitcoin Cash's uh, momentum because it's a split from Bitcoin Cash or a fork from Bitcoin Cash, I should say. And I think most people have just already made their minds up that the you know the real BTC is the real BTC. These other forks, yeah, I don't think they'll be around in the future. But who knows? I could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. So we come over here and we have a look at our uh, Bitcoin Swiss. Uh, they've done a a, a round of. Uh, you know, basically uh, getting money and they've pulled in 48 million, a financing round. That's the word I was looking for and it's right there in front of me. So $48 million uh, they have been able to uh, collect uh, and put into uh, their uh, digital assets kind of platform, I guess. So it says the financing round includes 16.4% shares of BTC holding AG consisting of 6.4% treasury shares and 10% newly issued shares. So basically they're, you know, collecting up a whole lot of money, getting people to invest uh, in, in their uh, sort of hedge fund sort of thing, I guess. Uh, and they are now valued at 326 million. So they've been doing all right. It does go on to say down here that uh, they had up to a billion dollars uh, worth of assets at one stage. I think that was around the 2017 kind of boom. And they were pulling in, so it says here, founded in 2013, Bitcoin says it had assets worth $1 billion in custody in 2019, sorry. And during the same period, revenues of about 225 million were generated. So they've been able to uh, get more funding, obviously more people investing uh, into Bitcoin uh, Swiss. I think that's how it's pronounced. Correct me if I'm wrong, someone let me know in the comments if I'm not saying it right, but I think it's Bitcoin Swiss, maybe Bitcoin Swiss, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But it just goes to show there's plenty of money out there for the crypto space at the moment. And you know, people don't want to have to worry about the custody and you know, how to work out smart contracts and that. And you know, they're more than happy to invest in you know, companies like this and get someone else to hold all their funds and invest them and do all the rest of it for them. You know, for the average, no, I wouldn't say the average day, Joe, but you know, for people uh, who don't want to, I guess, lose you know a reasonable amount of the profits that come with crypto and crypto investing, they'd rather do it themselves. You know, get it in your wallets, get on DeFi Zap and things like that, and you know, get the smart contract uh, DeFi platforms going, and you know, make all the profits for themselves. But you know, really large sort of hedge funds, you know, they're happy to do that for people and take you know, custody of it, but they charge a premium for it. Similar to Grayscale, I mean, the prices that people are, you know, buying Ethereum and Bitcoin for through Grayscale, you know, it's unbelievable, but they've got the money and they just don't care, you know, they're investing millions of dollars at a time, so they're not too worried if they're, you know, paying a premium for it, as long as they're getting the returns and don't have to worry about, you know, hardware wallets and cold wallets and hot wallets and you know working out the d5 platforms and all the rest of it so interesting story another one so twitch twitch is a massive kind of gaming uh platform that uh everyone likes to it, it's kind of like youtube i guess a little bit but it's for gamers people go in there and watch other gamers and play games and you know they interact with one another and all the rest of it but what they've said uh, is Twitch appears to be ramping up its crypto strategy. So now uh, you can uh, get a 10% subscription discount when paying with cryptocurrencies. Uh, and they do it through BitPay. So 10% off uh, if you're using crypto and it's Amazon owned as well. So anyone who says Amazon isn't getting into crypt cryptocurrencies and all the rest of it, don't believe it. They may not be uh, directly you know, promoting it. 
but they're into it. And all big businesses, they're not they're not silly, particularly with all these new rules that come out. You know, banks can hold custody of it now. They all would have been given the heads up ages ago that this was coming. They're usually onto it. They're lawyers and that are constantly, you know, keeping up to date with what laws and bylaws and things like that. Rules and regulations are going before, um, you know, industry courts and all the rest of it and are about to be passed. They're ahead of the game. So I would say they've been long into this and it's just now that really the information's being divvied out. So the whole gaming industry as a whole, that, that's a billion dollar interest industry and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. You know, I can remember when I was young, we definitely played games, but nothing like kids do today. There is billions of dollars locked up in gaming and they predict that it's going to grow and, and be, you know, a behemoth, an absolute behemoth. So I got myself some uh, engine coins uh, a while ago, the whole non-fungible tokens and things like that. I think it's going to be massive. You know, you can have a look at Decentraland's coin, Mana. Uh, and there's a few others out there, but I've just gone with the engine one. That seems to be the one that's growing uh, reasonably well and gets a lot of talk uh, throughout forums and things like that. So I definitely would say keep an eye out for crypto in the gaming space. I think it's going to be massive. Now, a little bit of sad news over here uh, is there's $5 million worth of Bitcoin uh, that was from the 2016 Bitfinex hack that's just been moved. So... That's, I guess, a little bit of a cause for concern that it's going to be dumped onto the markets. But really, $5 million worth of Bitcoin won't do too much to the markets. And it even goes uh, on to say down here somewhere that if someone was to dump $5 million worth of... Yeah, here it is. Full context. Someone issuing a $5 million market sell on Coinbase Pro will only drop BTC by about $40. So it's not going to be too much of a difference. And in all fairness, it's probably going to be put through the mixer and then it's going to be sold in OTC uh, over the counter sales. So you won't even see it too much on the markets. Uh, and that's what you have to remember is, you know, anything that's sold uh, over the counter, it doesn't affect the price uh, when it's being sold because it's not on the markets. It's not the market volume that we're all seeing. What affects the markets is when it suddenly gets dumped onto the exchanges and then sold. That's what uh, will affect the price. But you know, there's tons of people buying Bitcoin uh, straight from miners and Ethereum and Litecoin and all sorts of stuff. And Grayscale do that. And they've been buying it up, you know, left, right and centre. They've bought 50% more than has been more than has been mined this year. But the price hasn't moved that much because they're not buying it from the exchange, the exchanges. Sorry, excuse me. They're buying it OTC. So it's uh, when, you know, it all starts to dry up. And then the retail sector, not the uh, institutional investors, the retail sector are trying to, you know, buy up what Bitcoin is available on the exchanges. That's when you're going to see the price pushed really, really high. But likewise, that's when you're going to see the institutional investors slowly start to sell off uh, their Bitcoin when the prices uh, push really high. And that then will push the prices down really low and they'll be looking to buy back their, their clued on and smart. Uh, and that's what we need to be as well. Anyway, last but not least, we'll jump over here and we'll have a look. So as we can see, Bitcoin's been doing all right for seven days. It's been pushing up, but we're still really struggling to get above that kind of 9000 sort of $600, $700, $800 range. And we're definitely a little ways off the $10,000 mark, and I'm not sure if we're going to break it sort of in the next few days. Again, I'm still, you know, part of me, thinks that there's going to be a bit of a correction coming up. I could be wrong. And look, if I am, I'll be stoked. I don't have any problems. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me if we saw Bitcoin fall back down to, you know, 8,000, 8,500, maybe even 7,500. Who knows? And then we'll start to go on a run after that. But I guess technically some people might say we're on a bit of a run already. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks very much. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're making some gains. And I'll see you next time.